morning guys so i wasn't gonna vlog today but i figured i would vlog my day um it is currently about 11 almost 12 in the afternoon um my son starts school at 8 30 a.m and he's literally in school on the computer changing classes um until three o'clock and the snippets you just saw he is currently doing science they're watching a video right now on the different parts of a plant and um i'm tired you guys like extremely tired and i'll explain further why i am so exhausted um once my son leaves because tonight he has football practice um so when he goes to football practice or to his dad's house for football practice i will come on and like explain further my thoughts and feelings of the first two weeks of school um because it, it's been interesting. Pay my hand on mine. Um, I took out my twist and I have not washed my hair yet. So my hair is just going to be all crazy and everything. So yeah, um, I have my third cup of coffee for today. And hopefully that doesn't fall. I'm also um, about eight, seven chapters into the mark by Tim LaHaye and Jeremy Jenkins. This is eight book in the Left Behind series, and so far, so good. I'm waiting for the action to pick up, but it's definitely a lot of build up. But, um, yeah, I came in my mom's room to talk to you guys real quick while my son is doing his classwork. But I definitely want to talk about the first two weeks of school because there's so much going on, um, and emotionally. I'm not okay. Like, I'm just, I'm not. Every, it, 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 it's, it's a lot. Um, it, it's a lot on my, on my plate. A lot. And, um, I try to walk around like I'm okay, but I'm not okay. Like, I've come to the conclusion last night that I'm just, I'm not okay. And, um, some stuff triggered me yesterday. Um, so I'm going to come back and discuss it further with you guys. Like I said, when my son is done, um, hopefully he'll be done by two because his teacher normally lets them leave early anyway, <laughs> which is another, another thing to talk about. But once he is done with school, I'm going to come back and just really let you guys know what's been going on and where my headspace is and things like that. So I'm going to go back in the room now and get back to class because I do have to sit with him in his class the whole day. So, yeah. Next clip should be me discussing my thoughts. Oh my it's okay. I need you to write it. Come on. Yasir, could you mute your computer? You good, Chris? Yep. All right. What does this have to say? So, mm -hmm. six parts. Of, uh, sound it out. Plant. Okay. Okay. The last one is seeds. S. E. E. Yeah. Another E. Never mind. Never D. Mind. Okay. Uh-uh. D. Fix it. Not an N. Not an N. I said D. Did you hear N or did you hear D? S. So the plants. So read the sentence. The six 
plants mm -mm. parts parts of uh, mm -hmm. plants. plants first one is roots roots second stems stems third third is leaves leaves this is what flowers flowers fruits Fruit. hey guys so i am um just made my son's lunch um my brother ordered everybody Ch um, chinese chicken and fendras but my son is on this like soup thing he loves soup it has to be beef soup so he wanted that so i just made him soup he's eating it um school ended three hours before it should two hours two and a half hours before it should um so I don't even know where to begin with my thoughts and how I feel with virtual learning right now. Um, let me preface this just by saying I am feeling so many types of emotions. I am pissed. I am angry. I'm annoyed. I'm aggravated. I am bothered. Um, okay, so let me just say last year when they um, had to stop going to school in March, um, virtual learning was very different where uh, the teachers were meeting with the kids every few days virtually on meeting on google meets um but they would post work daily and you had until that friday to submit everything um so you basically were able to do the work at home with your child no problem when at, at their pace okay so that worked out perfectly i loved it so this year they're doing it completely different they're doing their regular schedule from 8 30 to 3 or supposedly till 3 um and they're with their teacher virtually on Google Meet the whole time doing the classwork as if they were in the class. They do get five minute breaks to use the bathroom. They do get uh, about five minute breaks to just take brain breathers and things like that. Um, they're changing their classes. So like every every other, every other day is a new class added. So they normally will have science, math, reading, writing, um, social studies, right? Yeah, social studies. And then they'll have a sixth class via gym, music, art, Spanish, or uh, technology, um, depending on the day of the week. Now, the only day they're not meeting on the computer to like virtually be with their teachers is Wednesday. So Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, they're sitting from 8.30 to 3 on the computer. Wednesdays is completely solo work. So you do the work by yourself. The teacher's supposed to work and you do it. Okay. That has not been the best. Um normally my son's teachers are in their 20s they're like late 20s early 30s his teacher this year is a little bit older she's in her 40s probably 50s i'm just guessing but i know she's definitely somewhere in her 40s like i said probably her 50s um she is not computer savvy number one um so it's kind of difficult because the first week of school she was omitting a lot of stuff as far as like video education wise because she didn't really understand how to share her screen and i thought it was a computer because she said it was something with her computer well today she was having the same issue um and i just i couldn't deal with it anymore i had to pop on and tell her you know maybe you need to um just present the screen and she didn't realize that she had to hit the present button so we got that worked out so now she's able to share the videos with the kids okay um they had a math test like I'm, I, they're doing a lot of pre-testing just to see where the children are within their specific subjects he had a spanish pre-test that he had to do um, but that was on like a Google form type of thing. And then he also had a math pretest today. It was 32 questions, but they did 10 questions today and they'll do the other 12 tomorrow. Um, and that is through Think Central. Now, they did Think Central last year, um, but for some reason this year, they completely switched all of the kids' information. So it's not the same login information as before because they're using a new system called Schoology. Um, no, they're using Classlink, which has um, all of the websites that they need but the websites already have their passwords like set. So all you do is you log into the class link and you click whatever site you need and it automatically take you to the site. It's already filled in so you don't have to like sign in or anything. So it's like a pre-signed in thing for all of your kids stuff. So we have to do that. Mind you, they sent an email to the parents with all the information concerning virtual learning. Why did all of the parents have an issue? And I have my own feelings about the parents right now because it's, I, 
I'm going to say I'm one of the few parents that has had the opportunity to be with her child from the time he was born, from the time he was a newborn up until now. I've been a stay-at-home mom. I haven't worked. So I've literally been with my son every step, every year. Every, you know, I've been blessed with that opportunity. Now, even though I've had that opportunity and I know what it's like to be with my son all day, every day, 24-7, like I know what it's like to be with my son every single day, most parents don't. I get it. This is new for parents. Parents are not used to their kids being home. They're used to being home by themselves from 8 to 3. They're used to being able to have that time to themselves. Totally get it. But what I don't understand and nor do I condone is you cursing your child out on camera, nor you popping and hitting your child on camera because they're not working to your sufficiency or whatever. I think people forget these are first graders. <laughs> they're 6 and 7. Um, and though some of the kids in his class are very bright, they're six and seven. You can't expect them to do certain things in a short amount of time. It's just not possible. Um, and it irritates me when I see these parents yelling at their kids, screaming at their kids, cursing their children out, popping their kids on camera in front of other children, in front of the teacher. And the teacher, like I said, she's a little older, so she doesn't know what to do, what to say. And it's just, it's been such a frustrating experience to see these kids cry and feel... I don't I don't even know how to explain the way I feel like I'm I'm like to hear with it I don't get it like even though I've been with my son at home for his entire life I'm struggling with having to do because I have to actually sit in his classes with him so like most parents don't have to sit with their classes in other schools but for my son and for his school and the way they have it set up I have to be with him because there's certain things that like if they're reading a story um the teacher will ask them like you know what's the main idea of the story right two details these kids don't really know a lot of words to write the sentences alone so i literally have to pay attention to every class that he's in from 8 30 to 3 i have a dry erase board where i use like to write down like his math problems i'll write them down so he can write them out and figure it out his sentences i'll write out and then have him write them out and i have to like be with him when he's reading his word i'm um, reading his assignments because he doesn't know every single word it is a lot of work on top of me still wanting to do the things that i wanted to do for daughter of increase or daughter of grace or just to read to read a book it is a struggle okay and i get it but these parents are so frustrating they're so frustrating and today i literally had to spend 45 minutes teaching them how to log into the system so that their kids could take the test and i just my mental capacity is just it's overloading <laughs> because it's so much and like I said when they did virtual learning last year it was not this way this time around it's like I'm in the class with him but I can't give him like I don't give him answers um I don't help him every step of the way but I do have to sit in the class with him and make sure that he's understanding things I have to make sure and reiterate what the teacher has spoken like if she's speaking too fast I have to repeat what she said to him so that he understands it I have to write sentences up because it's not a lot of her like she'll write on a piece of paper and hold up the paper but again she's older so her arms will tend to hurt so I have to like write what she's written down and then have him write it out and then they have to do the assignments and it's, it's so much it is so much um, you guys saw the clips previously. Um, it's it's literally like this from 8.30 to 3. She's been letting them go early at 1 o'clock, which I, I don't understand. Um, it's like they're not retaining much. So for my son, I personally will write down everything she says, have him write it, and we'll work through it throughout the day. Um, because I want to make sure he's retaining this information. And it is so frustrating. It is so frustrating um to have to do all this like I, i'm literally it feels like i'm working a nine to five but with my son from eight to three and then do my work but then still have mental time for myself it's so frustrating like frustrating and it's okay for me to be frustrated it's okay for me to be angry it's okay for me to be pissed off it's okay for me to feel these things but i'm not acting on them thankfully um i thank god for peace because <laughs> it's it's been an experience um and week two is coming to an end come tomorrow and i can say from last year how we did virtual learning to this year i do not like this i i don't like it at all and there's still a lot of um issues with these systems of course because they're still trying to get everything in place which is understandable but what i don't like is when people are so rude 
to the teacher when parents are unmuting their mics and cursing their children out when they're popping their kids because their kids are not writing fast enough for them that is mind-blowing to me like that bothers my spirit it bothers my flesh I just I and again to each their own however you raise your child that's fine but don't do it on camera turn the camera off turn the mic off we don't need to hear you cursing your child out we don't need to see you hitting your child it's been one heck of an experience um and then on top of that yesterday i was triggered um i was having a conversation with somebody and um they sort of triggered me with their reactions and the things that they said um and i was just in my feelings because I find that I'm getting back and every time I feel like I'm getting to the point of I'm less than I realize when I'm at that point there's something big getting ready to happen spiritually um, and I do have to minister and dance on um, Sunday I will be ministering and dance and I haven't danced like I said since March March was the last time I danced um, yeah the last Sunday that I danced was the last Sunday we were at church and um, I forgot I think I danced to Psalm 18 by uh, Todd Delaney. I danced to that. I will call on the name of the Lord. Um, and that was the last song that I did. And this Sunday, I'm going to be dancing to... Um, what was the name of the song? Lord Jesus, help me. I'm, I'm pulling a blank right now. Click the eye to go. It's by Embassy Worship. Oh my gosh. Living testimony. That's what it's called. Let me fix this a little bit. Because I'm about to um, organize everything in a second. Because my son's stuff is like still out from school. So I have to like put all his notebooks and stuff up. But I'm dancing to living testimony on um on um Sunday. Um it is my pastor's birthday on Sunday, so we are having a surprise birthday celebration and I will be I will be one of the groups dancing. I'll be one of the dancers dancing um on sunday and that song has been ministering to me if you follow me on in the facebook group you guys have probably heard that song um during the time i was doing the psalms bible study um i played that song i played it is so in living testimony by embassy worship and that song has been ministering to me for months for months and i'm dancing to that song um and it's a hard song for me to dance to because i'm not used to improv i don't like improv i'm a type where i need a routine but this is not the type of song for that this is a pure worship song and um i'm nervous about that on top of being triggered with some things that was said and i really want to explain but i i i'm hesitant to explain what i mean um but it's it's a lot <laughs> like <laughs> it's a lot going on it's a lot and i'm trying to keep balanced with everything that's going on I'm trying to keep my emotions in check because I know when I'm too emotional, I can shut down real quick. Um, definitely can shut down. I haven't had one of those moments in a long time um, where I just shut down, but I can see the signs of me wanting to shut down. And um, we, I'm not going to let that happen, of course, obviously, because I can see the signs. I know the signs now. and I, I realize now that there are certain things that trigger me. And I do have to speak to this person about it, but I don't, I don't know. It's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. And, um, you know, I've been, I've been playing that comparison game, which of course, you know, the comparison game is not good. Um, but I've been doing that because I've seen a lot of people within my ministry, uh, my church, my actual like church ministry, um doing well and not to say i'm not doing well but when i compare myself to others i feel like i'm lacking but when i look at it from a spiritual point of view i'm not lacking if that makes sense um again y'all know my situation with work that's always for me always going to be an issue and i was triggered concerning work yesterday when I had a conversation with someone and I don't think they realize that that's something that really bothers me because it's something I'm still struggling with I'm still struggling with um 
what I planned for my life versus what's actually happening right now and again I've talked about this in a previous video um you know I'm 29 years old I'm still at home with my mom I have a son I'm sharing a room with him I've been sharing a room with my son since he was born um and even if I wanted to work I can't work because you know I have to be with my son consistently for school and um that's a lot right that's a lot and then I've been slacking on my administrative duties, my social media duties, which hurts just because I've been overwhelmed with a lot of work. Um, I've already cut down to making one video a week for DOI. Um, so, you know, I'm trying to get a handle on that. And I definitely want to do full-time ministry. Um, and I know I can do it. I'm nervous to do it, but I know that I can. And I hear a lot of you guys, um, like suggestions um even my son's father suggested that i do um like programs or like bible study programs for you guys and to sell them for a short amount of money a small amount of money and um that's all stuff that i've been thinking on but there's just this fear i don't know why <laughs> so i'm working on that i definitely do want to release um some stuff i've been working on a devotional now for like three years two three years and it's like I'll work on it for a few weeks and then I'll stop working on it and then I'll work on it for a few weeks and then I'll stop working on it. I haven't worked on it in a minute ever since COVID. So I gotta get back on that. Um, it's it's a lot. There's a lot that I want to do. There's a lot that I really wanna do. But there's so much going on that I feel like I can't do it. And it's adding to the frustration, it's adding to the aggravation, it's adding to me being annoyed. <sighs> just, 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 just 2020 in general, if I could put 2020 in a volcano, I would. <laughs> I'm ready for 2021, but I know that there is purpose in this year. I know that there is purpose in everything that I'm going through right now. And I want to go into depth about everything, but I can't. Um, so it's just, it's a lot. And I'm waiting on God to just like you know get an answer to me but i know that i can't wait on him to give me the answer because there's certain things that i have to do i have to like make the moves and make that leap of faith it's a lot <laughs> it's a lot and um i make these type of videos so you guys can see like being a christian is not all that it's cracked up to be it's not going to be peachy it's it's really not i might seem to have it all together i don't there's moments like these. There's moments like the last time when I broke down and I made a video literally after me crying for out. Like, there's moments like that. And it's moments like these that I feel like people need to see when you're in these feelings and emotions and thoughts. Because we're, we as, as Christians, as a body of Christ, we don't share this with people. We keep it peachy. We keep it um, prim and proper. We don't show the realness of it. And I wish people would do that. And um, it's okay, like I'm learning that we don't like to be vulnerable, but it's okay to be vulnerable because that's when you're going to get your strength from God. And it's moments like these when I just want to take my hair and pull it out. But I'll get through it. I, I got my cup today. It says Jesus and coffee. I got this from Walmart. That's all I need today is Jesus and coffee. I mean, technically all I need is Jesus. I need a little bit of coffee because I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm so tired, so tired. Um, so my son has football practice today. So when he goes to football practice, I'm going to take some time and just read my work. I'm going to read and read and read and do some more and more. I'm going to read for hours until he gets back. <sighs> because there's so much that I want to do, I desire to do. There's so much that I know God has um, put on my heart to do. But I'm just like, I don't know. And I watched a video, I don't know. I was watching so many videos yesterday because I was just in that type of mood. And um, I think it was Morgan Tracy J's video where she talked about in the Bible, um, I think it's the Old Testament or the New Testament. I don't know, but it's the parable of the guy with the talent. I think that was a parable. I hope you guys can hear that airplane. Every time I hear an airplane and it's like too close, I start praying. I don't know why, <laughs> but um, I do live, I don't live too far from the Newark airport. 
um probably like 20 25 minutes from the newark airport so when the planes are landing they, they sound like really really close even though they're like up in the sky um so i literally begin to pray like anytime i hear a plane i pray so yeah that, that's become like a habit of me doing but um yeah there was a video she did i think it was her most recent video because i was watching like a bunch of her videos and other videos from a bunch of youtubers that my my watch playlist is long <laughs> um there's like over 200 videos i need to watch because i've been slacking but um i think it was her video where she talked about um the guy where the king had given i think it was like four four people talents or three people talent and um two of them went and multiplied it and the other one went and hit it and she compared it to us having our different gifts and talents and abilities from God and how we don't really use them. And um, we tend to sit on them. And that's something my bishop has always been telling me um, that I need to like stop sitting on my gifts. And um, I know that I have a gift for teaching. I know that I have a gift for writing um, and dance. I haven't been using them the way that I should. And that's something that I'm also working on. I really want to go back to school number one is one thing that i desire i've been desiring it for that for years um i want to go back to school but it's so much money to go back to school um when i left my last college i i'll do a whole like testimony on my college experience because my story is very wild and crazy um not wild isn't like the things that i did i mean i did have fun in college but like crazy in that i went to three different universities yeah three different universities um and uh changed my major twice and um it was all due to finances you know each school was expensive and my mom was taking care of me and my siblings by herself um so i'll have that testimony coming soon but um yeah i definitely want to go back to school and i want to pursue biblical studies um, I have a college in mind that I want to go to and I would do it virtually online um, because I can't go to the location because they're located in a whole different state and I'm not up chucking and leaving to a whole different state like I have a, I have a son. <laughs> um, but I definitely desire to go to um, this university or institute. I don't know if they're like a university or not. I think they're a university, but they call them an institute. Don't know. Um, but I definitely want to go to this school. Um, and pursue and I did previously talk to him um, talk to him about two years ago um, And the program that I would do would go with all of the credits that I already earned from my last few colleges um, But like I said, I feel God calling me to full-time ministry um, Not just within the church, but outside of the church with DOI and DOG and teaching wise and things like that um, So I do want to pursue that and I want to write Bible studies and I want to write little mini books and things. There's a lot that I desire to do, but this, I don't know. Sometimes I feel like what I have to say won't be heard. Um, and that's still something I struggle with every now and then. Um, even when I make these videos, I ramble on and don't think that you guys would really understand but then i watch the comments come in and i'm just like okay god you know it's like when i see the little comments that you guys give me um even if it's a word like that helps me a lot because there are times when i feel like i just want to scrap the video like i will sit and make a whole video and be like i don't want to post this video i don't want to edit the video but i'll go through and edit it because god's telling me to edit it and post it and i won't go i don't go back to watch my videos when i post them that's one thing i don't do is i don't rewatch my videos after i post them i watch them while i edit and then i upload i don't rewatch them again um I don't know this video is all over the place this is a just a, a, a crazy vlog I, I apologize <laughs> my mind is just all over the place there's so much so much so much just just so much that's all I can say like I don't know it's just too much for me right now mentally my brain is just like all over let me organize this stuff hold on So I keep the stuff in this bin, um, and I keep the bin out, but 
I just, I don't know, you guys. This year is insane. The school year is tiring, and it's only been two weeks. Um, it's frustrating to deal with these parents and how they treat their kids on camera. Like, what you do behind closed doors is fine, but on camera is another. I think the only good thing from this past two weeks is that I've actually been reading. Like, I've, I have time to read because while my son is in class, if I don't, if I'm not needed to write something, even though I'm sitting next to him, I can listen to an audiobook or read a book. So I've been flying through my books for the month, which is great. But it's just been one heck of a roller coaster. I am overwhelmed. I am tired. Like, I literally just want to go to sleep after every session. Every day, I just want to go to sleep. This is a science notebook. Social studies. dealing with if your child is doing virtual learning and they're like in the first grade or if they're below the grades the fifth grade how are you guys because i know like if your child is older they definitely can just do the work themselves they don't need the walkthrough but like i said my son is only six he's in the first grade and i have to be there like i have to sit next to him through the whole class so how are you how are your children dealing with it how are you dealing with it like Compared to how it was before with virtual learning, is it any different? Is it the same? Like, I don't know. I need to fix my bed. I didn't even fix my bed this morning. I just threw the sheets to the side and he got on the computer. Um, I also had to catch up on some reviews. Uh, I keep this, I keep printed calendars of like everything of like my videos for all three channels. Um, for my book blog as well as my DOI blog. It's just so um, I also want to get back into doing beauty videos, so I'm trying to figure out where I could squeeze that in. And I'm going to have to post a video. I'm going to have to make a video this week to post it before the 30th because I, I have a contract with YouTube. And if I don't post within the next 30 days, they're going to um, forego my contract. And I don't want to lose that contract, so got to do that. Um, I already started on my October. So, like... Uh, anything written in pink pen is for my book blog anything written in purple pen is for the doi blog um the mint green highlighters are for the videos i'll be posting on dog the pink highlighters are the videos i'll be posting for my book blog and the lavender is anything for doi i think i'm going to start posting on mondays for um my beauty channel um, so I'm thinking about that. Um, the only reason why my book blog, I can post two videos a week is because I made a bunch of videos. I made several videos and, um, they're already edited. So I just have to schedule them. So I have a bunch of videos to post two times a week, but even for that channel, I'm only going to post once a week and I'll probably only post on Tuesdays. So I'll probably do Mondays on my beauty channel, Tuesdays on my book channel, Wednesdays on DOI. And then Saturdays, I'll probably have a video for uh, DOG. So that's four days a week for four channels that I'll be posting. Um, until I can get a handle. Because I, I prefer posting twice a week. But it's just, it's way too much going on. It's way too much. For my liking, it's too much going on. Too much. Um, I do need to post. I need to edit a few. I mean, create, record a few videos. So I need to actually get a post-it note and figure out the videos i'll be making because i know for dog i have the introduction video going up um on this weekend and then next saturday i have a video on grace what it is how to get it and why we need it and then the third video um the first saturday of october i'll have a video all about the different types of grace that we have um i'm not sure if that'll be like a two-part video or not but i definitely want the first two like main videos to be about grace um, and then after that, I'll do like Bible study videos and stuff for teens. I'm debating if I want to stick to a specific translation for that channel. Um, I love the ESV and I do have the NLT. I also have a CSB, She Reads Truth Bible. So I'm, I'm trying to figure out which Bible I want to use specifically for that channel. Because you guys know I like to stick to a translation. I prefer the New King James, but I know when reading it for younger audiences, um, the ESV, CSB, and NLT are good. I have a bunch of ESV Bibles. 
so I might just do that. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. There's so much. So much. And I'm always trying to keep focused on what God wants and not what I desire to do. Um, that's one thing I'm always trying to do when it comes to my YouTube channels. Because when I think about what I want to do, I start getting caught up in numbers and comparing my channel to other channels. But um, I know that what I do here is what God has called me to do on this channel. And that is to edify the kingdom of God through book reviews, Bible studies, discussions, and things like that. I haven't done a lot of discussions recently just because I ain't had the time. But I will have a Bible study discussion video coming soon. Um, hopefully next week I can have that video up and it's going to be on um, 1 Samuel I think it is I can't remember the scripture but it's going to be a, a discussion on um, David and Goliath and um, it's because I had taught that twice already to my church for Sunday school with the adults and then for the teens and um, I think it's such an impactful uh, verse to discuss with you ladies so I'm definitely working on that um, and it's going to be not, not, I hope it's not a long video. I'm trying to keep that video less than 30 minutes. Um, it's not going to be a Bible study video per se, but it is going to be a study on that verse in which I'm sitting with you guys like this, just discussing it and stuff. Um, I have figured out some new things that I want to incorporate in my videos when I'm talking about scriptures because I have incorporated that for DOG. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a lot. I still need to work on one, two three four five book reviews i have a book review due tomorrow which i started it i just need to finish it and then i have four that are due coming up so i have a headache right now i need to eat but um this video was all over the place it was just me coming on to express my feelings and stuff just letting you guys know how i feel <laughs> pretty much but i'm gonna go gonna end this video i'm gonna get back to working i actually need to put some new dates um new information on my calendar and um these calendars i literally just google monthly calendars like i'll put whatever month it is 2020 and find pretty calendars and print them out um because they're very useful i have one for my son but i don't think i'm gonna need it and then i have one for all of my content creation um and anything youtube and i don't do instagram but anything youtube blog related i post onto these um calendars because i run two blogs i run three channels so i need to keep up with everything well four channels i run four channels um three but the other one my makeup channel will be up and rolling i'm actually probably just going to do a um makeup haul for my first video and then do a makeup tutorial because if i wait to do that tutorial it'll never be done i can just do a haul and call it a day so i might just do my eyebrows for that video some lashes and a lipstick and call it a day um but yeah that is it for this video my head is hurting i'm hungry so i'm gonna go eat my chicken and fries i'm gonna enjoy my evening when my son leaves like i said when my son leaves i'm going to just study my word because i need to i i need to get in the word like just sit and just soak in the word and um really just let the song i'm dancing to sunday minister to me because um sunday gonna be crazy Sunday is going to be a wild ride and I'm nervous like anytime I have to minister and dance I get nervous and especially because um it's being recorded so normally I don't have my dances recorded unless someone else is like recording but it's never like live my dance will be live um on Facebook so it, that's even nerve-wracking um so yeah oh and then Saturday I'm actually doing a huge makeup gig um for five girls for a gospel recording so it's a lot it's a lot it's a lot it's a lot it, i'm very grateful i will say that i'm very very grateful for all the time the time i'm saying time because i have the time but i don't have the time because my time is like take up with taken up with other things but i'm grateful for the time that i do get to have with my son um again most parents can't say that they've been with their child since they were newborns i am privileged and blessed enough to say that i have had the opportunity to see my son grow consistently that's one thing i will say despite all of the stress and um the feelings and emotions i may have i am very 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 grateful that um god has made it so that i could spend 
the first seven plus years of my son's life with him like i am the first person he sees when he wake up i'm the last person he sees when he goes to sleep i am with him with his schoolwork i am with him for just about everything minus sports i don't do sports his father's with him on that um i've been to his football game once and i went to his football um award ceremony but as far as like practices and games that's his, that's all his dad i'm i'm not a football person i don't do sports like even in college i never went to any of the sports games like i just i didn't care to go i'm not a sports girl so i, I definitely know i need to try to be so especially since i have a son and i do go to, i will go to his games every now and then but that's all his dad so outside of sports i'm here for everything else but um i'm very grateful for that chance um is he coming in the room oh no but yeah i'm gonna clean up this room i'm gonna put the music on and just listen to it and let it minister to me because i know when i'm feeling like this something crazy is about to happen like that god is really about to bless me with something and um the enemy likes to trip me up i've noticed that when it comes to me and my mom um, when things naturally start to go crazy, that means spiritually God is about to bless the mess out of us, like literally. Um, and I'm excited for the blessings. I'm excited for what's going to come because I know it's going to come. But the journey to get there. Ooh. One thing I can't stand is when people tell me when I have conversations with like associates that I went to college and, and high school with when they tell me. Oh, they wish they had my life um, because I have it good. And I'm just like, you really don't know what I had to go through. Like, you don't know what I'm still going through. You don't know what I'm dealing with. And um, many people look at my life and like, oh, you're lucky. You don't have to worry. You're lucky you could stay home with your mom. Like, that's not a great feeling. It's not. Not for me. At least that's not what I ever thought was going to happen for my life. Um, I thought I would have had my own place. I thought I would have been married by now. I thought... Um, I would have been working a good job, but I'm not doing any of those things that I thought that I wanted. God definitely has a completely different plan for me. Completely different plan. And um, I just, I don't like when people say they wish they had my life because I'm just like, you don't understand. Sorry, my son had opened the door, but I'm just like, you don't understand the depression I had to go through for 10 plus years. You don't understand the suicidal thoughts that I dealt with. You don't understand the the moments where I hated myself the moments where I tried to kill myself like people don't know those things about me um and they think that the life that I have now was easy it's not easy it still ain't easy because no grown woman wants to be living at home with her parents no grown woman wants to not have a job no grown woman wants to have to rely at least from my standards i never want to have to rely on a man to do anything i never want to have to rely on my mom and my siblings to do anything for me i want to be able to just say how am i going to store half five dollars in my wallet to go to the store i don't want to have to ask somebody for twenty dollars just so that i can go get a bag of chips and soda like people don't understand how vulnerable i have to be in order for me to live the life that i'm currently living um and you know people that i that know me they're like oh you have a youtube channel you have all these subscribers i'm just like that's cool and all but you don't understand the struggle that i had to go through to share my testimony to help other people get out of what they're going through you don't understand the attacks from the enemy that i'm still dealing with because i'm sharing the gospel and sharing my testimony and sharing my faith with people it just i don't know i think people need to be mindful of wanting someone else's life like, we're human, so we're going to have those moments of where we're, we're looking at someone else's life and we're like, man, I wish I had that lifestyle. But then when you think about it, you don't know what that person had to go through. You don't know what they're still going through behind closed doors. And people don't seem to understand that about my life. They always think I have it easy, and I really don't. I struggle daily. I have a son that I need to take care of, and I have to rely on everyone else to help me take care of my son. That's not a beautiful feeling, like, at all. It sucks. It, it it sucks majorly when my son asks, hey, mommy, I want to go to the store and I have to say I don't have no money. Or I have to say, um, let me just ask your dad or let me ask your grandmother or let me ask your uncles or your aunt. Like, when my 14-year-old sister has to give me money, excuse me, 15, <laughs> when my 15-year-old sister has to give me money so that my son could get something from the store, that sucks. Like, it sucks and it makes me feel terrible. 
but I do know that God has revealed so much about what's to come in my life that I just have to be content and wait on the promise to happen because his promises are yea and amen they never are going to be returned to him void every promise he has given me will be fulfilled but there's no time to his promises so it's just a matter of having faith keeping faith remaining faithful and staying steadfast and it's a struggle these past two weeks have been a major struggle honestly but even within those struggles, God has blessed me with a bunch of you just randomly donated. And I was completely shocked. Like, I literally cried and was talking to my mom because it shocked me that a bunch of you guys just randomly had donated to me. I think it was one of the videos I posted previously after that video, like, a bunch of people donated. Um, I was completely shocked. Um, me having this makeup gig, and it's a big gig, and I'm getting paid a good amount um for this gig and that's a god thing because i wasn't even thinking about doing makeup like that honestly i'll be doing makeup on five people for a, a gospel recording that is phenomenal and on top of that i'm using the new products that were gifted to me from my sisters leona and stephanie so like in spite of how i may feel and in spite of what everything looks like god is still in the business of blessing me even in the middle of a pandemic um even when I don't want to be because there's moments I don't want to be faithful and I'm being so real with you guys there are moments when I struggle to want to be faithful there are moments when I struggle with having to forgive people there are moments when I struggle with giving myself grace but even in the midst of that God is still faithful he's still loving he's still caring he's still chasing after me when I want to run away and I'm being real and authentic with you guys you I always say that but I always like to keep it that way because again I want my channel to really show what it's like to be a Christian, what it's like to be um, a leader within the kingdom of God. I'm an evangelist, but that doesn't negate the fact of me being a human. I'm still human with emotions, and there's times where I'm just like, I don't want to do this. I've been, <laughs> ooh, the past couple months, I've been there. I've, I've been there. But, but God, that's literally just but God. But I've rambled on enough. This video is all over the place. I hope it makes sense. <laughs> I really do and I hope that this video bless somebody out there with my jumbled up talking today but I'm gonna go I'm gonna go and um clean up eat some my head really is like banging right now like I, it's throbbing in this area so I'm gonna go eat um and just chill out till my son leaves and when he leaves I'll get into the word of God but I hope you guys are having a blessed day I hope you guys are enjoying your day. I hope you guys are getting through. If you're a parent, I pray for you. If you are a teacher, I'm praying for you. Um, virtual school year has, first two weeks for me has been interesting. Interesting. A blessing, yet interesting. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna go. Thank you guys for watching, rating, commenting, subscribing, and all that great stuff. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.